So this is engine, Powerfist engine reassembly, part two. So we've just put the rocker cover and the rocker cover bolts on in part one. And the next thing we're going to do is put our oil breather disc in. You probably taped that to a cardboard or the inside of your box. That disc goes in first. And then we put in the oil breather gasket and the oil breather cover itself. Put the bolts in and we torque the bolts. A common rule that I have is as soon as you put the bolts in from one component, you torque them. You don't say, well, I'll get to it later because you will forget. So even if you're doing a bunch of bolts in the same area and it's the same torque, doesn't matter. As soon as the component gets put on, which in this case was the oil breather, you torque it and then you move on. This is the fuel tank bracket. in those bolts and then we have the flywheel brake bracket this also includes the kill switch and the shutoff switch and all of those other linkages that would probably on a lawnmower be connected to your throttle which is up on your handle once again bolts in torque them Next is the oil dipper. It's got a little rubber O-ring on the bottom, so you're going to push that down inside of the hole there. Just be gentle and put a little bit of pressure on it. Put the bolt in, spin it in, and torque it. And make sure you, once again, write down the torque uh, under your notes on your instruction sheet. So now you've got everything that will fit under or near the flywheel assembled. We're going to put the flywheel on. It's got, don't forget the keyway on the flywheel, and it's going to line up, and you'll see it all of a sudden clunk down. That means it's lined up with the key, and everything's in place. And then we're going to put the flywheel fan on. It only goes on in one position, so don't force it. And the flywheel cup also, the starter cup. So we put that on, we spin the nut on, and then we would take it away, and we would torque that flywheel nut. And um, we had a video instructions on when to disassemble. You just do the same thing, put it in a vise with a crankshaft holder and torque it to specifications and write down the torque. And now we're back. We have to make sure that everything is tight. So we've got these blower housing studs. Those blower housing studs need to be torqued too. And if you are trying to put a wrench on there and it doesn't work and you wonder how the torque wrench is going to go on, you just use a deep socket. And that deep socket will fit all the way down in around the hex head and we'll be able to torque it that way. Good, now we have the ignition coil. Now the ignition coil, first we're going to reroute the kill switch wire underneath the flywheel. When we put the bolts in, we have to remember that we have to put those spacers on. Those spacers will hold the ignition coil out and away from the cylinder block, but in line with the magnet on the flywheel so that the spark can happen. And the other one is a blower housing stud. And we're going to put that one in too. Make sure we remember that spacer underneath. This might be a little tricky, but we can't leave it out. Every part is an important part, and we need to make sure we use them. So we're going to turn those. We're going to pull the magneto coil away from the flywheel 
and then just hand tighten those bolts up. There's a link on the ignition for setting the ignition coil gap on your paper. You can follow that. I'm also doing it here, but that has more precise instructions. So basically we put a feeler gauge in there and we torque the bolts to specification with that feeler gauge in between the armature and the flywheel. Excellent. We'll pull the long feeler gauge out and now that's set. Kill switch wire, don't forget that. That's how we're going to turn the engine off in the end anyways. Excellent. Uh, now the complicated part. Hopefully we were paying attention on the way apart. There's a gasket that needs to go on for the carburetor and then a spacer. Remember it only goes on properly one way. And then another gasket. Hopefully those are still in order from when you took it apart. And now we've got the fuel tank and carburetor assembly. And it just slides on like that. The last carburetor gasket, that'll go on. And... Um, That'll be just before the air filter housing. We'll slide that on. Now we've got a bunch of rods. This is the throttle control rod with the governor lever. Throttle control rod will push right down into the throttle linkage. It'll just pop right down, just like it popped out. And then we'll hook up the spring to the little hole right beside it. It's a little finicky in there and you just have to figure it out and get her done. And then we're going to move, uh, make sure we slide our governor lever on and then we're tightening up the pinch bolt there. You can just move it back and forth to make sure everything is nice and free. We're going to tighten up that pinch bolt. That squeezes and pinches that lever around the rod that goes inside of the engine to regulate the engine speed. All right, there's a governor lever guide that goes on just to make sure that if you're mowing lawn or something that a branch doesn't jam in there and that will actually make your engine die or over rev, something that you don't want to happen. So that just protects that from happening. We'll give that a torque. 